Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another video tutorial. Today is a floss tube extra where I'm going to share how I'm turning this awesome bunny spool from Crafty Blue Bonnet Designs into a tag that I can tie to a bundle of carrots. So we're going to start with the back of our stitched piece and I did stitch an outline around each of the front and the back. So this great design has a front and a back of the spool. And I measured just inside that back stitch line. I stitched three from each the two sides left and right and the bottom and then seven from the top. I left a little bit more at the top because I want to make this into a tag. Next, I have some lightweight fusible interfacing. The one I like to use is listed down below and I mismeasured. This is why I double check before I do anything. You can see that sticks outside the line a little bit. It needs to be two and a quarter by a scant three and a half, I believe. It's going to be different for everybody's finished piece depending on what fabric you stitch on and even when stitching the same count of fabric, I stitched mine on 36 count fabric, it can be very different just because of the weaves of different fabrics. So make sure you're measuring just inside the line of your stitched piece. I like to use a lightweight fusible interfacing most of the time if making anything stuffed because I do find that it just gives more stability to the project. You don't have to worry about any of your filler like poking through the weave of your fabric. Um, I just really like it. So I am using my little mini Aliso iron to iron this fusible interfacing right inside the lines. Now, it doesn't have to go right up to the line. You don't want it to go over the line. So the goal of my project today is to stitch this little tag. It could also be a pillow if you prefer a pillow without a sewing machine. So this is showing how if you don't sew with the sewing machine, but you would love to turn some little stitched pieces into pillows, you can. Next, I am leaving a quarter inch from the outer edge of my stitching line. And then I'm gonna move my fabric here out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and put that away. So again, all the way around both pieces, trimming a quarter inch. You don't really wanna leave more than this because it's just more that you have to deal with tucking inside of your pillow. Then I'm going to do a finger press right along that back stitch line. And I like to just kinda of lay it on my work surface, fold it and press. You don't have to actually press it. You could, I guess, if you wanted to. I don't, I just do a nice finger press, just teaching that fabric to fold to the back. We're essentially going to be stitching the front and the back together using our back stitch lines. If you watched my tutorial where I did the Quake, the Valentine Quaker finishing and I showed the little scissor fob in that video tutorial, it's going to be like that, um, just on a little bit bigger scale. Starting on one of the pieces, you want to do a little line, a little line of stitches. I knot the end of my fabric. This is going to be a stuffed piece, so I don't worry so much about having a little knot in that selvage, but I go ahead and stitch a little line. I kind of do a little running stitch, I guess, with that knot in the selvage on one half of the piece. Then I'm going to bring the other half of the piece together. And right now it is essential that you get them started in the same place. So you wanna do like a little scoop stitch, kind of is what I call it, through the stitch directly opposite. There's a very good view of it. And yes, I have, I most of the video will be sped up, but I wanted to show the starting in a little bit more real time. I do find that it is the most difficult to get started. So then I'm going to come back from the same direction. You wanna make sure you're going the same direction each time. And we're going to 
stitch going through the two stitches that line up next to it. Now, I will tell you, I kind of don't know why I started in the corner. It's easier if you, it's easy to line up in the corner, but I kind of wish I hadn't, but it ends up working out just fine. I don't think it matters a ton where you start, but I did want to point that out that I kind of had to come back and end in that corner. And I am using the same color of floss one strand that I used to stitch this as I used 36 count fabric. Now, as it turns out, I could have used a darker floss and it would have been easier to see, but I did not know if I would add trim to this tag until I was done, of course. And the reason I mention this is I love the back stitch line. I think it looks great on its own if you leave it without a trim to it. So I'm always kind of aware of that when I'm doing a backstitch line for a project like this. So you will notice here that it's really light, but if I leave it, and you're gonna see that here in a little bit, it looks beautiful. Now I'm not going to keep all of the stitching together. I just wanted to show a little bit of this, especially as you start. To me, starting is the most difficult part of this, just kind of manipulating your fabric, getting them to stay together. You'll notice I take my time with this. And then once you get into the rhythm, it goes so much quicker. I also highly recommend some sort of um, cl clips. I like these clover clips to hold it together because once you get it started, I was very easily, I'm gonna move that over to the side. I was very easily able to see the next stitches that line up. My camera was having a little bit of trouble focusing on me being so close. <laughs> but you can see me working that needle just through the stitches, not through the linen. This is just how you stitch these things together. Now, this would be no matter what size. Let's say you've stitched a pillow and you don't use a sewing machine, you don't have a sewing machine. This is a way that you could hand stitch a pillow and have a pillow finish. And I've been wanting to show this. This is going to be a little bit smaller scale. I know this is made into a tag, but these steps are the same. And hopefully this inspires you to maybe try a pillow finish of your own if you don't like to use a sewing machine or don't have one or whatever the case may be, but still would like to finish some things into pillows. It is a little time consuming, but I think the results are worth it. And you're going to see the beautiful backstitched edge that, or the, the stitched edge from this little whip stitch that you're doing through your backstitch line that really does give a really fun finished edge to your pillow. So even if, let's say you do use a sewing machine, but you wanna try something like this because you like that look, um, I definitely like that look. I think it's very fun. Um, this is an option. So I am gonna to continue to go through my stitches. Again, you're gonna notice my needle always comes right to left. Whatever direction you do, just keep it going the same direction so all of your stitches are exactly the same. There's a good look at how it's starting to uh, come together. And you can see, once you get a few of those stitches going, it definitely starts looking a lot nicer than when you first start, which just starting is for me the hard part. Okay, we're gonna continue to do this. I am going to speed the video up because it is re very repetitive until we get to that first corner and I'll show you how we go through the corner. As we work our way towards the first corner at the top of this pillow, or in my case, a tag, you're going to want to ease in the selvage at the corner. And that needs to happen a little bit before you get there. I like to kind of fold the corner down and then fold the, the two sides in to get a nicer corner. 
it will feel kind of unnatural, especially the first corner. You, well, really all the corners kind of feel this way to me a little bit because you're easing quite a bit of fabric into those corners. You could even trim it if you want to. I don't like to trim too close to my back stitch line so i do like leaving that quarter inch but what i do find is that as you stitch around the corner and it is a little bit trickier but as you stitch around that corner you tend to find that the corner just kind of naturally the fabric will fold in so see how i'm folding it down and then i'm going to fold the two sides in i'm going to fold the corner down on the other side and fold down it's just kind of fiddly and this is where clips are going to come in handy so I've kind of folded and I'm just trying to line up a little bit and then I'm going to pinch it with my clip almost serving as an extra set of hands in this instance and then I'm going to go right back to grabbing so you see how I'm probably at least a quarter of an inch or more from the corner when I go ahead and fold the edges in, giving myself that natural, nice pointed corner. And then I'm going through my back stitch line. Now you're starting to see how pretty that back or the whip stitch looks through the back stitching. And it's creating almost a design on its own. It's such a fun way to finish a little pillow design. Or even you could make this into, this would be kind of too probably big of a scissor fob, but you could um, definitely stitch some of these, some designs small and make your own little scissor fobs like I did in that Primrose Cottage tutorial, which I do have linked at the end of this video and I have linked it down in the description. So as we get to the corner, my best advice is take a little bit of time and make sure you're lining those stitches up exactly. There probably is room for a little bit of fudging if you had to. I really try not to. In fact, I'm not sure if I left that in the video or not today, but I did um, take out a couple of stitches as I worked where I found myself, I was like, oh, that's not lined up correctly. Or I, I kind of messed up a stitch, you know, just whatever. It happens when we're actually cross stitching as well. And it's easier to fix right then and there. This is something that you're not going to want to come back and fix. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the length of your floss. This is a small pillow and I was able to use my regular length of, I think this was a Gentle Arts? No, this is a color and cotton floss, duh. Um, so whatever the link, the pre-cut length of color and cotton, I was able to go around the entire design with one strand of floss. If you're doing a bigger stitch, you may have to you know, end it, end it and start another one. I do really like being able to use just a single strand of floss. Like if you're using DMC, which you, you definitely could, you could cut it really long. My problem with that is I, I struggle. <laughs> I do struggle getting it to, um, not tangle up and just be a disaster. Okay, we're making that first corner and I wanted to kind of again leave this slow as I'm making the corner. See how much fabric we have there? But we're going to just kind of keep going through our stitches, lining them up and it is it just is a little tricky because it doesn't want to fold very well. And I wanted to show this and I wanted to show it in real time so you could hopefully really see kind of scooping that stitch. It's pulled really tight too. So getting my needle through it was kind of a, a trick, but we're going to get there. And again, always being aware of keeping the whip stitch going the same way. For me, um, what helped me since this was a two-sided design, I always brought my needle from the backside piece to the front side piece. 
Okay, we're going to speed through whip stitching the rest of this until we get to the end and I'll show you how I will fill the pillow. So this definitely is not a super fast um, <laughs> step, I suppose, uh, as far as, or a, a super fast way to stitch a pillow together, but it is a really fun way. And like I said, you can definitely see that decorative edge. So it almost automatically gives a decorative edge to your finished piece. I am using quite a few wonder clips here. It just helps give me an extra set of hands or two to hold things together. And I found it went faster. I was having a ton of trouble with my thread knotting and I just took my time to make sure and get those knots out as I was going and I'll keep moving my clips as I go. Now a couple things to keep in mind as you're stitching and as we're finishing and getting close to the end you want to leave a hole for turning or for turning you want to leave a hole for stuffing not turning in this case and I am going to leave it obviously close to the end and that is why I wish I had not started right at the corner, but it, it, it turns out just fine. So don't worry if you do that as well. I just wanted to mention that normally I like to leave it like along one of the long sides would have been perfect here. One of the beautiful things about this finish as opposed to machine stitching and then having to hand stitch your pillow shut is that this is going to be a seamless seam finish because you're going to simply stuff it and then continue stitching through your back stitch lines. And so I really feel like it's almost a prettier finish. Um, generally, probably with pillows and such, if you're like me, you disguise a lot of those back stitched areas or not back stitched, uh, blind stitched areas when you're doing more of a traditional pillow finish with a trim of some sort. So for this, you wouldn't really need to because it looks beautiful once you just finish stitching it up. Now you can use polyester fiber fill for my little scissor fob. I used poly pellets um, to give it a little bit more of a weighty feel. I'm actually going to use wool roving today to stuff this little pillow tag. Now the reason being I have been wanting to try this for a while. Kathy of Hands on Design stuffs most of I think her pillow finishes or her block party finishes, anything like that, pin cushions with wool roving. And so I had picked some up and I've been meaning to try it and kind of just keep forgetting. And so I will be using that for this finish. Because I want it to be a tag and not a pillow, I am not going to overly stuff it. It's going to be stuffed kind of what I call a flat stuff. Very, very light. It's one of the reasons I chose to use wool roving instead of uh, polyester fiber fill. So let's just do a few more stitches. And then I think I did some of these off camera, mostly because it is so much easier to uh, stitch with my magnifier light, which was not here in my room. <laughs> so I did some of it on camera and then I went and stitched it right underneath my magnifier so that I could see it a little bit better. When we get about, let's say an inch to an inch and a half opening from where we started, I am going to stuff with wool roving. So here's my little opening. You can see that it's stitched all the way around. This is from Binzi Design. Let me find the end of it. And I'm going to just tear little pieces of it. And then I am going to do the same thing that I do with polyester fiber fill where I loft it. I'm pulling it apart and then I'm sticking it down into my tag. Now I am going to start placing it down here in my tag or pillow, whatever you wanna call it, but I decided, you know what, before I do that, I probably should poke a hole. Now, this is where we're gonna deviate from a pillow finish because I do want this to be a hole. If you have an eyelet set for fabric, that is what I would use. I do not. Um, so I actually have this eyelet setting kit that I've had for years 
from making memories. They are not even around anymore. I don't know if you can find this. So I will link, if I can find something similar, I will link to that down below. But I am using the correct size for hole making through my fabric um, using, or that coordinates with the eyelet or the grommet that you're using. So I will try to look for a kit to um, place in here. Now mine don't have a backing. I'm just using these leftover eyelets from paper crafting. And I wanted to mention that here because if you're a paper crafter, you can do that too. You'll notice I punched the hole, place the eyelet in, and then simply use the punch thing to punch the back of it down to grab that fabric. And then I used the little hammer that came with the kit to make sure that the back is nice and flat. Now I did that before I stuffed it because I did take that stuffing I placed in it out so that I could get it nice and flat. Now that is why I left more room up at the top of my pillow than I did around the sides or the bottom and because I wanted to make sure I had enough room to put a little hole in this so that I could make it a tag. You want to use something like a eyelet or grommet maker because that's going to protect your fabric, those raw edges from when you poke the hole. If you don't want to do that and you still want it to be a tag, another idea is before you sew up the top, you could place ribbon in there or you could even hand sew ribbon I suppose I don't know if I how that would work exactly but you could sandwich ribbon in between the layers um, especially if you were machine stitching I would have to think about it for hand stitching um, or even twine or something in between the two layers of the pillow and you could just have it hang from the top of the tag too but I wanted this to very much look like a paper tag that I would create, uh, but obviously it's out of cross stitch and out of fabric. And anyone who follows me for card making knows that tags are kind of my jam. They're my love language, I guess, in paper crafting. I love them. I have since the beginning of my paper crafting journey. And so I loved being able to create this all along. I knew I was gonna make him into a tag. I just was hoping it was gonna work. <laughs> and it did happily. So here I am very lightly stuffing. You can see I'm using very light uh, or very small pieces of the wool roving. And I have this uh, bamboo stick. It came in my polyester fiber fill long time ago, but any kind of chopstick or anything will work but I love it for stitch or for stuffing my pieces. And I have stuffed this very light. It is not a firm stuff. Okay, so I have finished stitching this up. You can see that I am coming around this last corner. I am going to go past where I started probably two stitches, not very far. I don't wanna double it up too much, but I do wanna slightly go past where I started and yes, this is why I don't suggest starting in a corner and finishing in a corner because it's kind of clunky. That was just an error on my part and I'm sharing that with you so hopefully you don't do that. Um, start a little bit further from the corner, you'll be happier. <laughs> and once we, oops, you can see how much thread I had left too. I had plenty to go around. Once we get past this, I am going to leave a little loop, go through the loop twice with my needle and pull tight to create a little knot. Then I'm gonna go down in between the seam allowance and come out another seam allowance and snip that off, pulling the knot down into the middle of my pillow. And there we go. And now I'm gonna manipulate fluff. Look how cute he is. Oh my word, I just love it so much. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is create some cording. I will do a dedicated cording video at some point, I think, um, here on my channel. I know there's other cording videos out there. I s did a little bit of one and I'm going to link it right here in the upper corner of the screen for my scissor fob out of felt tutorial, but I am going to do a two color cording to go around my stitched piece. You want to measure around your stitched piece so it was about two and a quarter. So let's say it's five and a half by three and a half by seven, so 12. Take that times two, that gives you 24. And I want to leave a tail at the end. So I generally add like five, six, seven inches to that 
for the length of your floss. So I have a couple of colors of natural or neutral, pardon me, colored floss. I'm using three strands of my darker color, three strands of my lighter color. I'm knotting each of them together individually, so dark and then light, and then I'm going to tie them together on only one end. Then that one end that is together, I'm gonna to leave the other two free for now. I am going to secure to the edge of my work table with this clamp. I use this clamp for everything if you've watched any of my finishing videos. And that is going to hold that in place. And then I'm going to take this Krynik tool and I am going to twist the darker brown strands. And you, I'm doing this counterclockwise, I think is what I did this. Either way, you wanna do both of these individual strands the same way. And when we place these two together, we're going to twist the opposite way. And I'm holding that first one. You can tape it down. This is where I'm saying my camera just couldn't zoom out the camera I was using today. Um, so I'm making it, but I will do a dedicated video, probably something somewhat short, not a complete finish, to show you guys how to make the cording, just so you can find all of that here on my channel if you're interested. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Hopefully, though, maybe this will give you. So I am twisting now the opposite way to twist these together. And you want to twist it till, see how it's starting to turn curl up on itself. That's perfect. And then I like to run it through my fingers and I'm gonna let, lightly let loose of it now and keep letting it go until we have our cording. It's super quick and easy to make and I promise to have that cording video up for you guys soon. Now I'm gonna fold it in half. I want my cording to end at the bottom of this tag and because of that, I want to glue it up at the top and come around. So I am not going to sew this on. I am going to glue it on with a little Aileen's glue. And the only thing I want to say about this is use a little bit of glue. These glue pins are fantastic. Um, go slow and you're probably gonna wanna do it in steps. Don't use these clips, by the way, that did not work. I'm just gonna let it sit and dry. So what I would do is I would glue a little section of it and I would just let it sit and dry. Um, probably like 30 to 40 minutes and then I'd come back and I would glue a little bit more. Yes, it was kind of time consuming, but I didn't want to sew it down and I had other things I could work on and do. In fact, I came back and finished this the second day. I did a lot of this one day and then I just kind of let it sit and dry and came back and, and finished it up. Go sew some carrots. If you want to do the same finish that I'm doing, you could go sew up some carrots. Now, obviously, if you're sewing up carrots, you probably know how to use a sewing machine and you could have sewn a the tag with your sewing machine or go buy some carrots, especially now um, if you can find some on clearance, there's all kinds of carrots. You could create something similar that don't have to be fabric carrots like the ones I'm using. So some of this video is not all filmed at the same time. I do want to be transparent about that. I know it seems like I'm gluing it all all at the same time, but as you see me add glue to another side of the pillow, often it has been sitting and drying for a bit. Now, especially the top and the sides, those were glued down and allowed to sit and allowed to sit overnight. I do kind of try to clean up my glue as I go. You want to be really careful not to get it on your stitches and I'm just kind of using my fingers to tap it very lightly, hold that cording down in place. Look how pretty the double, the double color cording looks. Oh my gosh, I love it. Love, love, love it. Um, making cording is so rewarding. It really is, it's kind of crazy. Okay, so we're gonna come around the bottom. This was the next day. You can really tell because the light changed. <laughs> And I am going to, or maybe it was late. Oh, you know what? It was just later that same day. I forgot. I did glue it all and let it, let it set overnight. So we're going to come kind of to the center and I'm overlapping my cording just a little bit like so. And we're going to let it set. And I'll come back and finish it up the next day, which is really just adding it to 
our, our finishing the tassel at the bottom and then adding it. Now I had um, hand stitched the pom pom to my spool, but I didn't like it. So I'm going to glue it down and we're going to allow that to sit and dry overnight too. You can just leave it stitched if you like. Okay, I've come back the next day and I tied it together and I'm like, I don't love that. You can see I've got my carrots here. I've got a little bit of twine. Um, we're going to make this a little bunny tag for our bundle of carrots, letting the Easter bunny know that this is his present, I guess. <laughs> for Easter, I don't know. Um, so what I ended up doing is I'm going to pull my two strands together here at the bottom and we're going to create a little knot and we're going to pull that tight to the pillow. Work slow here is my best tip. It did pull a little bit away from my finish. I will have to re-glue um, right down there at the bottom to secure it, but that's not a big deal. That's not very tight. So just be gentle with this. And we're just gonna tighten that up. Okay, I like that. I think that's going to look a lot nicer. If you wanted, you could always add like a little wood bead or something to this. I think that would be fun. I briefly considered it. Okay, we're gonna snip the ends. I'm gonna leave plenty. And then I'm just, I'm using, you can use the tip of a needle, I'm using my scissors, but I wanna fray out the ends for a tassel. It's going to be a very little tassel, but I like that little tassel-y end at the bottom of my tag. Um, I even have a dry toothbrush. This has never been used, by the way, and I'm just, not in my mouth anyway. And I'm gonna use it to brush out my tassel. There we go. Oh my gosh, so cute. Now I am gonna go in with a little more glue. I'm gonna put it right underneath that knot. That's the only place it wasn't secured and we're going to adhere our knot to our pillow and we'll let that sit for a little bit before we finish. Okay, I have some of this measuring tape trim. This is from Lady.Creates. I will uh, link to anything similar that I can find down in the description. I really liked the tape measure -y look of this ribbon or of this twill tape because I think it goes well with the spool design. And then we will be finishing with a couple of fun pens from just another button company that are carrots keeping with the spool theme of this design. So I'm loosely wrapping that around my bundle of carrots that I created and I sewed these up using a fig tree pattern. I will link it down below as well. And then I've got some twine that I'm going to do just through the top of my tag and then just cut the ends. It's a very short because we're just gonna thread that on to our measuring tape and then I'm gonna tie it into a little bow. So we've bundled our carrots, we've given them the cutest little bunny spool tag. I think it's a really fun way to incorporate cross stitch into some of your finishes. It's, very, it's a very non-traditional finish, I know, but I hope that it inspires you to maybe think outside the box with your little stitch finishes of ways that you can use them for decor that maybe aren't a traditional pillow. And that's always my goal. So here's a look at the finished bundle. So cute, so much fun. Um, let's grab a couple of these carrot pins from just another button company. And I'm going to kind of take them through the center of my bow and then into the carrot. It's just going to secure it really nice, but not permanently. That way I could always take this bunny tag and put it on something else if I wanted to. Um, you could even make these and tie them to Easter baskets. I think that would be super, super sweet. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Easter spool little stuffed tag finish featuring the crafty blue bonnet designs bunny spool. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.